Hello, this is Calvin. If you haven't been here before, then welcome to my channel. I put together this tutorial on how self-leveling laser levels work and how to calibrate them as I could find no other information on the internet with this kind of detail. And I figured that if you're watching this, you couldn't either. Anyway, I hope you find this useful in learning about your self-leveling laser. Let's first start off with placing the laser level on a flat surface. When the switch is turned on, a laser is emitted in a 360 degree circular pattern or plane. If properly calibrated, the emitted laser light will be 90 degrees to the vertical axis of the internal pendulum in the device, and the horizontal laser plane will be perfectly parallel to the floor, and the height of the opposing plane edges will be exactly the same, thus making the height of A the same as the height of B. However, if the internal pendulum is not accurately calibrated, it will not sit level in its gimbal, and therefore the circular laser plane will be tilted, indicating that the internal pendulum is not balanced and requires calibration. If your laser level is out of calibration, you should always first check with manufacturer's instructions on how to recalibrate it. Also, before opening up your laser level, make sure you will not be voiding the manufacturer's warranty, as many manufacturers may require you to send it back to them or certified shop to do the adjustments. If we take a look inside a typical self-leveling laser level, we'll find a laser diode sitting atop a mechanical pendulum supported by a precision gimbal bearing assembly. This entire assembly is installed in a hermetically sealed housing to keep any dust or moisture out of the delicate gimbal bearing assembly. When buying a laser level, make sure the ingress protection rating or IP rating is at least IP54. However, an IP65 or higher rating would be ideal. The laser diode is located within the gimbal assembly. It emits a beam of light upwards that is refracted by a prism, creating a very thin horizontal plane of light 360 degrees around its circumference. In a green beam laser, the emitted visible light wavelength is around 550 nanometers, making it about four times easier to see than traditional red beam lasers, which emit wavelengths higher in the visible spectrum of about 630 nanometers. Green beam lasers are more desirable, but they're more expensive to manufacture, and they also consume more battery power than red beam lasers. The laser diode receives its power from micro-thin wires connecting it to a printed circuit board. These fine wires are necessary to ensure they do not affect the near frictionless movement of the gimbal, so extreme care must be taken when handling the gimbal assembly. Now the gimbal bearing cradles the laser diode, which is aligned to the Z-axis along with the pendulum. The two pairs of bearings within the gimbal assembly allows the pendulum to freely swing fore and aft across the Y horizontal axis and side to side along the X horizontal axis. Even though these two axes are perpendicular to each other, the gimbal allows the pendulum to rotate freely about both, providing around 8 to 10 degrees of total travel, which is restricted from further movement by internal bumpers to keep from damaging the laser's pendulum assembly. However, they are typically calibrated to about three to four degrees of pendulum swing from level position before some type of an audible alarm tone sounds. To dampen pendulum swing so the laser quickly settles to a level position, manufacturers will typically install magnets or sometimes use compressed air for a dampening effect. Most self-leveling lasers have counterweights within the pendulum assembly that are adjusted to calibrate the position of the laser and ensure it is 90 degrees perpendicular to the horizontal level. By adjusting the counterweight in or out, the pendulum's center of balance shifts, making one side heavier, pivoting the laser plane around the x-axis. In this example, the pendulum is off balance by about 3 degrees. By adjusting the calibration screw in, we can adjust the pendulum's center of balance to 0 degrees perpendicular to the vertical axis z. Both the z-axis and the x-axis are now at 90 degrees. This example demonstrates adjustments for x-axis, but there is a similar adjustment screw perpendicular to the x-axis screw for adjusting the y-axis. Now, some manufacturers will use a locking compound on the calibration screws, making it near impossible to adjust without damaging the screws. However, these can still be adjusted by adding small amounts of hot glue or epoxy to the lighter side of the pendulum, allowing it to be reset to the zero balance point. Well, I hope this tutorial has provided you with some basic information on how a self-leveling laser level works and how to calibrate it. There are literally hundreds of makes and models out there, and the information provided here is in no way intended to supersede the manufacturer's instructions. Also, I've only provided guidance on how to calibrate the horizontal laser plane, since adjustments for the vertical laser plane are done differently. Regardless, you should first ensure the horizontal laser plane is calibrated before attempting any vertical adjustments. 
Before I go, I want to give a big shout out to Makerspace Workshop 88 and Jim Williams for his excellent write-up on a teardown of a self-leveling laser level. And I greatly appreciate the contribution of his photos used in the making of this video tutorial. I'll include links to Jim's website where you can find more information. Have a great day and see you next time. Come on, come on, come on, come on.